I am sitting down with one of my all-time favorite people on the planet, Olympic gymnast, Sean Johnson, and her husband, also one of my favorite people, Andrew East. Hey guys, how are you guys doing? Good, Good Monica, thanks you? for having us on. Thank, yeah. <laughs> it is all, the pleasure is all mine. So I'm wondering if you guys can start off by telling my listeners a little bit about yourselves, about your Olympic and NFL careers, what you're doing now, and anything else super interesting about yourselves and your family. Yeah. Um, so I competed in the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing, China as a gymnast. Um, I competed for 19 years. And after the Olympics, went on to win Dancing with the Stars. I was on Dancing with the Stars All-Star season. I've been on The Apprentice. I've written uh, two books. I now, with my husband, um, do YouTube and kind of digital marketing and then working on like the entertainment side as well. I feel like I should go first to the, so no. you, so it's, I can't follow that, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, I have been playing in the NFL. I'm currently with the Redskins. I've been in the NFL for the past five years and it's been a fun journey. Um, Sean and I have been married, what is our third year of marriage? Third year. It's been a roller coaster, a blast. Uh, but what, let's see, something interesting about me and my family the one I, the, the fun fact I always give is we're beekeepers, Monica. Yes. Whoa, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun fact. Great. Yeah. My mother-in-law has bees in her backyard. My kids know all about that. That's super fun hobby. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sean doesn't like it too much, no. but I think it's a blast. <laughs> oh, I do have a question for you. If you're playing for the Redskins, you guys live in Nashville now, though. So do you commute or how does that work? Yeah, yeah, I commute. So we get four days. Um, right now it's the off season, so we're we're practicing for four days, and I come back to Nashville for three days. We love that. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. So I have so many. Well, actually, you guys left out, Sean. You just got inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame. Like, tell us a little bit about that. That was so cool. Yeah. Um. So I was chosen this year to be inducted into the International Gymnastic Hall of Fame. Um, it was an honor and a dream that I never thought I would attain, but it was the coolest, one of the coolest moments of my life. Well, so proud of you. That is really such an accomplishment. So I have so many wonderful questions for you guys, but can you, for all the sappy ones out there, we're going to talk all about your marriage, but can you tell us the story of how you guys met? Uh, yes. So I was working the London Olympics in 2012 yeah. and met one of the USA national team or USA Olympic cyclists and his name was Guy East. Um, we hit it off. He was such a really cool dude. He was telling me that I should go to Vanderbilt University instead of Stanford where I was like applying and on top of going to Vanderbilt I needed to meet his younger brother. So when we flew back to the States he kind of set us up on a date and let me take it from here. So we went on this first date, Monica. And I showed up. I had, you know, my my smile bright and ready to go. I was hilarious during this first date, just cracking jokes left and right. I thought I nailed it. She stood me up for nine months, didn't talk to me for nine months. And finally we, we saw each other again uh like that next May. And once I don't know what happened, but once that I second fell head day, over heels the second date. Yeah, yeah. When, once we went on our second date, it was kind of a done deal. But that's how yeah. it all went down. She had to make sure you were willing to work for it. Smart girl. Yeah. I guess yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> okay, because everyone loves a sappy love story. Andrew, can you tell us how you proposed? Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay, so I uh I got the ring, I bought the ring my first year out of college. So I was in Kansas city with the chiefs and I was like, Sean's a girl I'm going to marry. No doubt about it. I bought the ring and, um, I wasn't going to propose I bought the ring in June. I wasn't going to propose until December, but I sat down with one of my mentors and he was like, he was like, why are you waiting that long? Just find a mem find a memorable moment that you can propose and do it. So she was actually throwing out the first pitch at a Cubs game, Chicago Cubs game that next day. And I was like, wow, that'd be uh, like a quick turnaround. <laughs> but let me see if I can make something happen. So I called, called like the Cubs organization, called the organization she was throwing out the first pitch with. And they're like, they're like, well, let me get back to you tomorrow. So the day of, this would all be happening. So I didn't know the day before that I was even going to get engaged. But I wake up and they were like, hey, we're not going to know until two hours before first pitch if you can do it. 
So I was like, what? I can't, this is so much pressure. This is crazy. But anyway, they, they got back to me and they're like, okay, it's going down. You better be ready. They made jerseys with the, with uh, her new last name East on the back of them. And she threw out the first pitch. It wasn't that great of a first pitch, hey, but, <laughs> I made it. I made it, so yeah. um, but I, I met her out on the field, dropped on one knee and you still haven't said yes. You kind of just shrieked the whole time. But I said, yes. Yeah. We did it. We did it at a Cubs game on the field and it was, a it was perfect. Yeah. Oh, that's a pretty good story. <sighs> so when you guys were engaged and first married, what's the best marital advice that anybody gave you? Um, I would say two things come to mind. Um, one, premarital counseling was something that we have a lot of people tell us we should do. And it was one of the greatest decisions we've ever like done as a couple. And then I also, we, we also had a lot of people say the first year is the hardest. It's not the honeymoon phase, like movies show you. And I think that just kind of set our expectations at a good place. So it made it easier to deal with like, all the transitions and changes, I guess. Yeah. We sat down with a lot of couples that we respected just like as we were engaged, just to, we wanted to go about it in a very intentional way. And two things that we heard back a lot was manage expectations because expectations mm -hmm. can really like make or break a relationship. And then also be constantly strive more towards self-awareness. So like mm -hmm. if, um, if, we're getting in fights and I think it's because of Sean, but really it's because I'm tired every morning and that's when all our fights are happening. Like just realize like, Hey, you know what? I need to be a little more patient in the morning because yeah, just because I wake up grumpy on the wrong side of the bed doesn't mean that that gives me a warrant to like be rude to my wife. So like self-awareness and just realizing that you're not perfect and uh, you can, you can always improve. Mm -hmm. mm, I love it. Good advice. Good advice. So what has surprised you the most about being married? Like, were you shocked by any, any of each other's little habits or anything? Um, the first thing that came to mind is super cheesy. It's not a habit. But I believed the day that I got married was, like, the greatest love I could feel for my husband. Just because it's, like, your dream day. And... It's weird to look back now because I feel like I didn't even know what love was back then because it's just like every year, it's just, it's crazy how much more your heart grows with all the good, bad, and ugly, but. Well, you're really cheesy right now. I know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Keep it coming. <laughs> um, the thing that surprised me most, and I actually, the, one of the books that I most often recommend is The Meaning of Marriage by Tim Keller. He made me read that on our first year dating. No. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. um, but he talks about it in this, and it surprised me. There's so many people out there who talk about self improvement and like whatever, but marriage, I think, really is the best tool for self improvement and like reaching your best life or whatever people say. Um, it's just like it. It really is a challenging, growing experience, and it constantly amazes me how true that is that you're you're always growing in your marriage personally and together as a couple i love it i love it so both of you guys participate and have participated in super competitive sports does that competitiveness ever come out in your marriage if so who's more competitive and what can you just not stand to lose at uh yes we're so competitive and I don't think one of us is more competitive than the other. We're, we're both very stubborn when it comes to competitiveness because we always want to win. Um, what can we not stand to lose at? We, got, we, we play darts a lot. And yeah. Sean, I don't know how, but she beats me all the time. And it's the most annoying thing ever. <laughs> but then one thing I was really looking forward to when we got married, I was like, I was like gosh here's another athlete that likes working out. We're going to work out together <laughs> all the time together, but no. it hasn't worked out that way because we're so competitive. Yeah. She'll like watch me doing squats and she'll be like, you're not doing the form right. I'm like, <laughs> shut up and let me do my work. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. We compete literally in everything. Yeah. Sean, or at least Sean does me. I'm just, oh, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. 
So how do you guys handle disagreements? Is there one of you who usually apologizes first? Like what does a fight in the East household look like? Um, well, it's usually at night. We've noticed that we tend to fight more at night, which I think. When we're tired. Yeah, whenever we get yeah. tired, we get more irritable. Um, and disagreements for us, I don't know. I think, I think our roles have kind of reversed. Because when we first got married, I was the kind of person just, I would bottle things up. So as soon as we like would start disagreeing, I'd be like, I'm fine. It's good. Move on. Like, I don't want to talk about it. And Andrew would want to like fight it out until we couldn't fight anymore. Whereas like, it's almost reversed now because he's, he becomes more aware that like we're fighting because we're tired. And he's like, okay, let's just table this. Let's talk about it tomorrow. And I'm like, no, we need to fight it out. We need to fight it. It's like, we can't fight anyone. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that answers your question, but. We, as hard as this is, we always try not to like yell at each other. Mm -hmm. we're, we're super emotional, obviously, like, as we all are, but we try not to let that anger unleash on the other person. So anytime one of us might be getting too aggressive, like verbally, we're, we're always like, hey, take a step back. We can talk about this like two mature adults. Mm -hmm. um, but we fight yeah. a lot. Yeah. We fight a lot. I um, think we're both like really <laughs> passionate people about what it is we like and believe. And so when you have very two headstrong people together, it makes for a lot of fights. But I also think our fights are good because we do have a rule of transparency and which I think is really important in a relationship. There's so many relationships where people just don't bring things up. And we have a rule in our household that if something bothers you, you have to bring it up. And yeah, we try not to let things fester. And another thing that's big for us with our arguments or fights or whatever you want to call them is some people view that as some like discourage something discouraging, like, ah, oh, like maybe she's not the right person for me. But I view it as us just like growing closer together and understanding each other to a deeper extent. So having that perspective change was like huge for us because I feel like that's a big misconception that fights are bad where like really it's just mm -hmm. you're two different human beings with different opinions and different styles and that's bound to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I will share with you the absolute worst marriage advice that anyone ever gave me. And I've been married for 17 years and we are so happy and I understand what you're talking about, Sean. It just keeps getting, the love keeps getting stronger. But um, the worst thing anyone ever said to me was never go to sleep angry with each other. And that has proven so false. So don't ever let anyone tell you to, to not go to sleep angry because sometimes it's better to just go to bed. <laughs> so what principles or lessons have you guys learned from participating in professional sports that has helped you in your marriage? Um, I think the perspective of always seeking out having a coach is something that we're like, we're always used to having somebody help navigate us and that's ingrained in us. So like whether it's older couples who have been married longer than we have or premarital counselors, like we're always seeking that advice from experts. And I think is one thing. Um, I think also something we both learned from sport, which has helped with our marriage is like nothing in sport is easy and you have to work for it. And so I think we're both very used to like striving for perfection or striving for success. And because we both have stuck with our sports for so long and overcome so many hurdles with marriage, it's kind of the same thing. I don't see a roadblock and say, Oh, I want to quit. It's just kind of like, how do we work through it? Yeah. And I feel like one more thing is uh, <clears throat> when you're, when you have coaches that expect a lot of you, they'll you're you're always getting criticisms as you do in marriage. Like, mm -hmm. hey, why didn't you put up the dishes? Or hey, the, like, why is why is the laundry not done yet? Why is your underwear on the floor? <laughs> yeah, that happens. <laughs> uh, but like, when when you're always getting that feedback from coaches, you realize that I can get critiqued about something that I did, not about who I am. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's look, we're not. That still is a big, big. Mm -hmm. uh, learning curve that we have to go through and realizing that it's not really about she's not insulting me she just doesn't like how I do this um, but having gone through that our whole life with coaches is a big a big thing for us too that's awesome are there any like non-negotiables like are either what do either of you have like things where you're like 
you may not ever use my toothbrush or something just silly like that. That's just like not going to work. You have some for me, for sure. Spill it. Go ahead. Like what? It. Deodorant I... and showering and freaking <laughs> cabinet doors. It's not non-negotiable. Oh, well. <laughs> I, this is news to me. She... She thinks that I never put on deodorant. So every he doesn't. morning, oh my gosh. He doesn't. So every morning she'll like come up to me. She's like, did you put on deodorant? I'm like, yes. She's like, no, you didn't. Put it on for her. <laughs> <laughs> cabinet doors too. She just can't stand to see. When I put up dishes, because I always put up dishes, I never close the cabinet doors and that's her least favorite thing. I don't know if that's a non-negotiable. It's not non-negotiable. Maybe pet peeves, little, little yeah. things. Uh, Sean is not a morning person. It's my pet peeve that she just like tries to write that off as a reason to be grumpy. <laughs> I'm just not a morning person. <laughs> um, we're really though, we, we do only have like one quote unquote rule in our relationship and it's tra like transparency and Sean mm -hmm. mentioned earlier, but like any don't let things fester. If you're, if you're feeling something, let it out. And there's like a, a mature side to that where there's a right and wrong way kind of to express that. But, but we've yeah. also equally given each other grace in that world because when we agreed to full transparency, 100% of the time, it was kind of like, okay, then you have to be prepared for whatever it is that I'm frustrated with or, and you have to like give grace to it. So it's been good. Like it works for us. Yeah. That's awesome. That's perfect. What do you love and appreciate most about each other? Oh my gosh, everything. Um, I just, I love Andrew's heart. It's just, it's the most incredible thing to witness him around other people and him around kids and him around just anyone at any time because he can get to know someone in five minutes and get them to open up their heart, which I think is incredible. And is not something that I'm capable of. Um, so just seeing his like acceptance towards everyone and everything and his curiosity to like learn more and love more is just really, it's like really cool. Every time I watch him like talk to someone new, I just like, oh, look at you. Thanks, man. Aww. That's really sweet. Uh, Sean, I always say, is the most thoughtful person I've ever met. She's like a great gift giver and always going out of her way to serve other people in whatever way. Um, and then she's also, it never ceases to amaze me, she's like the most talented, able woman I've ever met and simultaneously the most humble, which is like such a rare thing. And uh, hats off to you. <laughs> Okay, so my turn. What I love and appreciate most about you guys is that unlike a lot of people who have gone before you or in your position, you guys have maintained such an like innocent and clean reputation. I love that, you know, I can just relish in the fact that my kids hold you up as role models. I love how you haven't gone to the dark side and the sex cells and stuff. What do you think has kept you grounded in that and helped you stay kind of the course? Um, First of all, thank you. Yes. Thank We're you. honored that your kids might hold us as role models. Um, that's something like Sean's been in the public eye ever since you were what, 13. And she is so, she has such a, an awareness of the effect that any interview or picture or video that she does has on other people that I honestly don't. I, uh, I would without her definitely have already gone to the dark side, but she's always like, she's so again, like thoughtful and aware and realizes that she, she is making an, an impact. Um, and I, I gotta give you all, I gotta give no, the credit. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I feel like it's a, a very large question. I think, we're so driven by temptation every single day. And it's so easy to fall into temptation. Ab like people do it every single day. We have fallen into like sinful traps. Um, but it's just like, I think having each other has really helped like keep us on course and seeing kids walk up to us and say, Oh, we watch you or we follow you. It's, 
it's just like a reminder of the course that we want to be on, I guess. Yeah, and we're, we also try to, like we're very, very conscious and deliberate about who we spend time with. So like, that's why we live in Nashville, Monica, because we know that our community here like is always gonna give us, again, feedback and like keep us on the, the moral ground that we want to be on. Um, it's so easy. We were in LA for two years and it's like, I look back on, we were kind of tilting more towards the edgy content a little bit, like not, you wouldn't really notice it on first glance, but we were definitely going down that road. And so we moved back here intentionally to be around people that held us accountable. So, you know, what do they say? You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And that's true with, with a couple friends as well. Yes. I love that. Well, my kids, I don't, let them watch every season of Dancing with the Stars because it gets a little edgy. Um, but but they loved your seasons, both of them. I, I told all your dances, they loved them. My daughter had one of them memorized and she would do it all over the house. It was awesome. You know what's crazy, Monica? I was really looking forward to dancing with Sean when we started oh, dating. Yeah. We have danced twice ever. She's a beast dancer, but again, she's she's so humble almost to a fault that she's like, like, oh, I can't dance. I can't I dance. I can memorize choreography. I can't just go dance. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. My little girls were gymnasts just up until last year. They competed level six and did awesome. And then they dashed all my hopes and dreams by moving into other sports. So it's okay. But I was dealing with the I was trying to decide, do I change gyms? And we didn't want to leave our gym, but they weren't getting the training they needed. And anyways, they try, decided to try new things. And so now they dance and do basketball. So it's all right. Um, might, <laughs> might be better off that way, huh? Yeah, yeah it probably is. I, I wasn't ready to let, have them give up so much. But yeah. so you guys work closely together now and probably spend a ton of time together. What have you learned about working closely together like that it can be difficult a lot <laughs> yeah um it's not easy i don't think it's for everyone to work together um for us it's been like a huge huge learning curve just learning our roles and what we're supposed to do and how we fit together in a business setting um so i think i think we've just really worked really hard over the past three years of marriage to find our roles in business outside of our roles in marriage, which I think are different and like separating those has been hard to find, but I think we're just now getting the swing of it, the hang of it. Yeah. Not to be cliche, but like establishing boundaries is huge. And so along with that, like, again, being honest and saying, Hey, I'm not comfortable working past 6 PM. Like, it's difficult for me, but that's important to Sean. So that's something that she's always reminding me of. Um, uh, and that's really important for me to try to strive towards. Um, and then also like, this has been interesting for me, like changing uh, what roles we have in marriage. She's the CEO. So she makes the end decision in all business things, um, which is like, sometimes my pride is like, well, why can't I make all the decisions? I deserve to, I'm the man. Um, but realizing that, that that's just how things are and that's better off that way uh, is really important. So I think, I think like striving towards humility always is really important on both of our sides. I love it. I love it. So I've heard you guys talk about how you have a really unpredictable, unstructured schedule. You've had to move around a lot and every day just looks totally different. How do you handle that and stay flexible? Um, I think just accepting that that's our normal. I think accepting right off the bat that we're not going to have the same schedule every day and that we really don't know if we ever will is just what we've become used to. I mean, if we expected that, then our lifestyle would probably drive us insane. But we've just kind of gotten to a point where we're like, we don't know where we're going to be tomorrow, and it's fun, and we're just running with it. Yeah, football has taken us all across the country on all different timelines. And so um, we have kind of set things that we say we need to do this, that, and the other. But it used to be total chaos, total unpredictability, like, like we – 
just had no idea really what was going on and didn't feel like we were in control. But we've kind of hit a rhythm where it's like, again, communication through it all, uh, patience and understanding. I feel like we've, we've come to a pretty good spot. Mm -hmm. So this is really exciting. You guys are getting really close to becoming parents for the first time. What are you looking forward to most about this new phase in your life? Um, I would say the one thing that we've continued talking about over and over and over again is we believe the stronger our relationship is, the better we can parent. And I think it just goes back to that cliche sappiness that I was talking about earlier. I'm excited to grow closer with Andrew in becoming parents to a baby. And I, I mean, I, I can't wait to meet our child. I can't wait to raise our child. I can't wait to like take him to Disney World and like throw birthday parties and everything. But I'm excited for us when it comes to having a kid. Yeah, caveat to all this, we have no idea what to expect. Yeah, so no. <laughs> we're probably gonna in the reality. Um, I'm excited just to have like a little boy version of Sean or girl version of Sean running around the house. Like, I think it would be fun. Of us. Of us, of us. I think that just, you know, I feel like humans just love seeing miniature versions of themselves. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, no doubt this is going to be like one of the most athletic kids to ever be born. I'm sure of that, but <laughs> so because of my, only because of my genes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Sean, I've heard you talk a lot about your parents and how supportive they were of you by working several jobs and being at every gymnastics meet you've ever done. What things have you, and I'm sure Andrew, that your parents were wonderful as well. I haven't heard much about them, but what things have you all learned from your parents that you will take into your own parenting? Um, we've actually like had these conversations already or started them of like what we love that our parents pass on. Um, I'd say the one thing that I value so much from my parents, what they taught me from day one was um, that no matter their, you know, backgrounds or what they did or what they were capable of or what, what they came from, I was capable of anything and they never put any limitations on like any of my dreams, which I think is really cool for a kid. I think there's so many kids out there who have um, parents and just society in general where if they're not good at something, their parents are like, oh, it's okay. Let's try something else. And my parents were kind of the opposite. They could have cared less if I was good or bad at anything. They just wanted me to have fun. And I think that teaching that and instilling that in me as a child allowed me to dream so big and not be limited by, oh, I can only do what I'm good at. Because I wasn't good at gymnastics <laughs> at the beginning at all. Um, but I had such a love for it that my parents were like, if you love it, you should keep working at it. And it was just really cool to see. Yeah. You know, what? Is there anything your parents about? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, yeah, I, just the selflessness of, um, like, it, 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 j I'm just so blessed, honestly, to have parents like them that, just like Sean said, made me, allowed me to believe that anything was possible. So they, if I wanted to do lacrosse one year, they let me do it, even if I was awful. If I wanted to play trumpet, they would allow me to do it. And there's never like, ah, oh, now's not a good time or like I'm too tired I can't take it to it was just like they literally were so selfish and being like you tell us what you want to do and we can help make you happen and make it happen so it was great mm -hmm. that's awesome so the question on everyone's mind little gymnasts football players I mean are 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 we going to enroll them in all the sports or are we going to lean in a certain direction how do we feel about that I think football and gymnastics are the least like priority on our list um I feel like so many people are like you have to put them in it because it's going to be natural and because our parents were so anti that we're very anti that I would love to put them in anything that they're curious about and if gymnastics or football happens to be something that they ask about at some point yeah we'll try it out but it's zero pressure or zero like desire from our part to raise a gymnast or a football player. Yeah. I love it. So can you tell us a little bit what it's like to be married in such the public eye and anything you've learned from that experience? Um, 
I almost think it's made me like appreciate our marriage more just because so many people have so many opinions on what is right and what is wrong. And it just like makes me value what, what it is we have even more because I see people's opinions. I see people's um, comments and it's kind of like, yeah, you can, you can think that, but I believe something different with us. And we've gotten really good at like strategizing what it is we share with the world. I know the world feels like we share our life, but we've gotten really good at not doing that and only giving the world things that aren't sacred to us. I mean, I don't want to say like our pregnancy isn't sacred to us, but like we got to experience it. We got to like have it as our own. We've had so many moments as our own and we've just picked one or two little moments here and there to share with the world. So it's just, yeah, it's just made me value our, our relationship even more. I feel like we've grown in the sense of it being like people know us now kind of because of a relationship. And so that's placed more of an emphasis on us investing in our relationship. Uh, so it's really been like, there's been a lot of good that's come out of it though. It's taken us again a while to kind of get into a rhythm where Sean, you know, I'm now I'm not, being abrasive with Sean if I want to take a picture of whatever or film whatever we've, we've come to a good a good rhythm with that where we're really communicative and um and able to just like realize what people are comfortable with and, and what we are awesome okay I just have a few more questions for you if you could talk to all the engaged couples in all the world for just a few minutes what would you tell them I would say marriage isn't easy and it's not supposed to be and don't expect it to be, but it's also the greatest thing you'll ever do. I feel like so many engaged couples find someone that they're in love with and they're like, Oh, this is going to be perfect. They're the one, you know, it's going to be easy because we're meant for each other. And I think that's so far from the truth, the truth. I think you can be totally meant for each other and it not be easy at all. Like it's a lot of work and that you, you make a commitment every single day. And as long as you're willing to work for that, then it's the greatest thing ever. Yeah. I would say get counseling. Yeah. Period. Point blank. Mm -hmm. Yep. I love it. If you could ensure that there was one thing that this new baby East knew that his mom and his dad stand for in their lives, what would that one thing be for each of you? Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, that, I should have prepared you with that one. <laughs> Jeez, this just rocked my world. I, I don't know if this answers the question properly, but the only thing that keeps coming to mind is that we love each other and we love them with every ounce of our soul. I think everything else will come in time and like morals and moral compasses and religion, like all of that. It's important, but yet at the end of the day, I think have like raising a child that knows they're loved and that their parents love each other. I think is important. I heard the success defined as having the people who love you the most respect you the most. So I would hope that they would view me as successful in that sense that that's what i hope they know me for yeah well yeah perfect mm -hmm. what are you guys working on now that you're most excited about sharing with us oh my gosh we're actually in the mm -hmm. middle of filming a whole of like a whole couple of videos for the pregnancy series on youtube mm -hmm. which is a blast um we also have some like new merch coming out, which has been mm -hmm. a fun project. Um, but we're, I feel like now more than ever, we're, we're enjoying the content that we're creating and sharing. And it just gets me pumped up. Yeah. Awesome. And we, have, we have quite a few other projects. I feel like we've got a lot on our plate right now of like really exciting, massive ventures that we might be jumping into. Um, so stay tuned, yeah. stay yeah. tuned. Will do. Awesome, you guys. This has like seriously been like the greatest. I don't know how long this has been, but it's been wonderful. Thank you guys so, so, so much. Thank you.
you. Those are great questions. Thank yeah. you for taking the and, time. Um, thank you. To learn more ways to deepen your intimacy and strengthen your relationship, make sure you watch this video next.